Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We've come to the third week in a series of readings that that tie together Jesus' power over sin, death, and today we see his power over the devil and his minions, his legions of demons. In that first week, we saw Jesus' power over death as he met the funeral procession coming out of the city of Nain. And he went and he touched the funeral procession, that coffin, and told the boy, arise. Jesus has power over death. And last week, we saw Jesus' power over sin as a woman whose sins were many and who were obviously known to her, came to her one solution, to her one Savior, Jesus Christ, came and spared nothing to show her gratitude for the forgiveness that was hers. She poured out expensive ointment on his feet, washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and kissed them clean. Yes, she rejoiced because Jesus has power over sin, and her sins, which were many, were forgiven her. Power over death, power over sin, and today we see Jesus with power over the devil, over the devil's legions of of demons. The man comes forth to where Jesus was. Jesus goes to the land of the Gentiles, outside the the nation of Israel, fulfilling the prophecy from the book of Isaiah, where God said, I was ready to call a people who weren't looking for me, to go to a people who ate bacon. I'm okay with that. I like bacon. I'm glad Jesus came for bacon eaters. (laughs) That's one of me. Because the Jews did not. But Isaiah was prophesying that that God was ready to go to a people who didn't follow the food laws, who were outside the covenant given to Abraham, to those who, who sat and made sacrifices to idols and ate tainted food and said, we're too holy, don't come near us. God was sending a savior even for them. God was ready because saving just the nation of Israel would have been too small a thing for him. No, he saved the whole world, you and me. And so Jesus goes out into the country of the Gerizans, opposite Galilee. And he goes out there, and as soon as he touches land, this man comes out to him, naked, full of demons, probably smelling pretty bad. And he says, What do you have to do with me, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And if that teaches us anything, it's this. Knowing who Jesus is, is quite a different thing from having faith in him. Did you catch that? Knowing who Jesus is, even believing that he is real and exists, is quite a different thing from having faith in him, loving him. The demons knew who Jesus was, the Holy One of God. But they knew that his presence among them was not one of blessing and of salvation and of peace, but one which would bring them torment because their world would be coming undone. Their power over this man, that he could break the shackles of iron that caged him, was soon to be undone. They would be cast into the abyss, not simply by his word there on the seashore, but on the cross. Satan and his demons know who Jesus is. They love him not. They trust him not. They want him away from them. So dear Christian friends, those around us who acknowledge that Jesus is that Jesus exists, that he might be, or that there is a great guy upstairs watching over us, is not the same as faith. As faith which loves God, which trusts God, which sees Jesus as the victor over sin, death, and the devil. 
the demons come out and they say, away from us. The message of the gospel goes out to our friends and neighbors and they say, away from us. The herdsmen go into the city and tell the story of Jesus throwing their pigs off the side of the, the, uh, the cliff. And they come and they say, Jesus, away from us. And we bring the gospel to our friends and to our neighbors. And how often are we met with the response, away from us? How often in our own temptations do we see that sin Death and the power of the devil have power over you and me as well. When we're tempted, when that kernel of sin wells up within us, when our sinful nature, which is our very root, springs forth in sinful actions, we are indeed saying to Jesus, away from us. Go away. I want my darkness. I want my sin. Because right now it feels good. Right now, I like what I see, and I'm not going to do away with it. Away from me, Lord Jesus. You see, the problem of the man here among the tombs is your problem. The problem of the woman who wept at Jesus' feet is your problem. The problem of the man who laid there dead in that procession on the way out of Nain is your problem. Because you are under the power of sin and death, and of the devil. He will tempt you. You have a sinful nature. And we know because we are sinful, we will face death. Jesus comes to you. He comes to you with power over sin, death, and the devil. He has power over the enemies which perplex you which torments you, the skeletons in your closet, the demons which must be exercised, the temptations that you have. Jesus here on the cross has come to set you free from those things with a word, with a word that brings peace, forgiveness. Forgiveness, the power to become the children of God, the blessings that come from calling out to him, Abba, Father. You are children of the new covenant, children of Abraham by faith. Faith has made you well. Faith that trusts in Jesus as your Savior, not just who knows who he is, but who fears, loves, and trusts in him above all things. He has power over sin and death and the devil, and he gives that victory to you. And we're going to go a little out of order here this morning. Normally we do that catechism portion at the very end, but you know what? It fits right here. Grab your bulletin. Let's go to the back page. Because we just used the Apostles' Creed to confess our faith. And we said that second article, Jesus Christ is only Son our Lord. But let's read together now what we confess this to mean. What gets behind those words? What do we mean when we confess that second article of who Jesus is and what he has done? Let's read that whole thing on the right-hand column. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from all eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Did you see it in there? He has purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and the power of the devil. That's what we've seen over these past few weeks. And that's what you'll continue to see in every gospel reading. Every time you open the scriptures, you will see God's victory, God's power, God's control, and God's winning over sin death, and the devil, and how that is made yours. 
Because we confess that I am a lost and condemned person. We confess that this morning in our confession of sins. We know that each day as we rise, we confess that we are by sinful, by nature sinful and unclean. And so we acknowledge that the problem of the man at Nain, the woman at Jesus' feet, and this man with the demons in the Gerizines is our problem. Sin, death, and the devil are not just the problem of, of, of the notoriously evil, the circumstantially unlucky, and the culturally uneducated. Those being under the sin, death, and the devil is our issue under the fact that we're human. And so Christ comes to us to set us free. As much as we beg him, don't torment us, don't take these things from us. Let me keep my pet sins, my comfort zone, my various things that keep me at peace. Away from me, Lord Jesus. He comes to us and with a word casts out our demons. In a word, he forgives our sins and he raises us from death to life, life everlasting. And this man, this man wants to be with Jesus, begged that he might be with him. Lord Jesus, where you are, I want to be. So he would be here this day with us because Jesus is here among us this day, proclaiming his word to us and giving us forgiveness and life and salvation. And hear what Jesus says to him. He says, and this is our verse of the week, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Word had already reached the city about Jesus. Those herdsmen fled and saw what had happened, and they told, the, told it in the city and in the country. The message of Jesus is going to go out. So let that message of Jesus that goes out be from our lips, proclaiming how much he has done for us how he has set us free from the power of Satan and from sin and from death. Because the culture around us, the world around us, even our sinful nature will proclaim a message of Jesus that doesn't point to the cross. So let's tell how much God has done for us in Christ Jesus. This week, the young people from our congregation some of their relatives, some of their friends, their neighbors are going to come here. And we're going to gather under the theme of tell it on the mountain. We love that hymn, you know, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, right? Tell it on the mountain. You saw the, the mountain wall as you came in, the boulders sitting there and things. They're going to be learning by going to five different mountains throughout scripture. And they're going to be learning how much God has done for them. And you see what the response for how much God has done for you is? You can't keep it quiet. There's news to be told. There's good things God is doing for you as well. And see how much God has done for you this day. He has given you forgiveness and life and salvation. We don't just talk about that it happens or that it sort of exists or that it's out there somewhere for you to claim. No, you come here and you hear it proclaimed to you that you are forgiven, you are set free, and you are given life in Christ Jesus. Jesus has power over sin and death and the devil. And when Jesus comes in, Satan flees. The strife is o'er, the battle is done. He takes out the teeth of our enemy, that lion who roars, seeking someone to devour. Our enemy is defeated, and we are set free, and we are free indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.